Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hello, everybody. So excited to be here with you today. I have an amazing guest to share with you today. Her name is Sharon Hartwick. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her personal, professionally. I'll start with that. And then I'll tell you a little bit about her personally because, yeah, I know her and she's amazing. So here's the professional bio part. Sharon Hartwick is a LinkedIn marketing expert with over 20 years of experience in sales and customer service. She quickly learned she didn't love the corporate methodology or structure and has never believed marketing or sales is just about talking to anyone who will listen to make the sale or close the deal. Sharon believes in finding the right prospects and building meaningful relationships to increase the no like and trust factor so that our clients are only talking to quality warm leads. This enables her clients to close sales faster and have more time to play to their true power, creating the stuff their clients love. Now, personally, if you are only listening to this on the podcast audio, I highly recommend taking the time to go take a look at the YouTube video because Sharon and I are both wearing tiaras and Sharon's is especially gorgeous because it is a dragon tiara. And we're going to go get into why a dragon and learn a whole lot more about Sharon. So I know Sharon personally because several years ago, I had the great fortune of Sharon choosing to join my virtual expert training program. And Sharon accomplished, uh, set several goals. I mean, uh, set, sev set several, um, I'm blanking on what the word is. She accomplished more than anybody else had accomplished in a faster period of time than anyone else in my program. Now, speed isn't necessarily the goal um, of, you know, creating your own virtual expert business, but creating money so that you have that ability to live on it, that is was a big goal of Sharon's. And Sharon, in fact, was able to do that faster than anybody else in our program to date. So Sharon, welcome. Thank you. I'm really excited to, to have here. you here with us today. <laughs> I'm very excited to be here today. <laughs> so I just want you to jump in from wherever you want to on your journey. Um, and, you know, I already know so much about you, so I got to just keep my mouth shut so that you can tell the story because I'm like, Sharon's amazing and I can tell you so many more things about her. Um, but I'm going to just ask you to share with us your journey of, you know, where, wherever you want to start to, you know, when you decided to become um, a virtual assistant and a virtual expert. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my journey to entrepreneurship actually began um, decades ago. I mean, we're talking um, probably around about the same time that you actually started your first VA business. I um, was a younger mom. Um, I was uh, about in about 20 at the time. Uh, I had a, a child at that point. He was about a year and a half. Um, I was working uh, in downtown DC in the corporate world uh, as a, a manager in an office and doing all the, the corporate world thing. Um, I quickly learned because I wanted that, that corporate or that, that executive income. I wanted to climb the ladder, but I quickly learned that I couldn't, um, I couldn't have my cake and eat it too. Cause I also wanted to be present in my kids' lives and I wanted to be that, that soccer mom. So ultimately something had to give and I chose motherhood over the corporate career. Um, like you said, over, 20 years, um, I've done many different things, everything kind of revolving around some form of customer service or sales. I've been very blessed and very fortunate in periods in my life where I was able to be a stay-at-home mom. But during those times, 
I wanted to be able to contribute to my family financially as well. So I never gave up on that dream of finding something that I could do from home in order to make a substantial income to be able to contribute to my family. I, um, I tried pretty much, I mean, you name it, I've tried it. I tried making candles. I tried stuffing envelopes. I tried, um, gosh, the candle making, soap making. I tried the, um, the network marketing, MLMs. <laughs> you know, you name it, I've tried it all. And nothing was ever giving me uh, the income that I really needed or desired to be able to um, contribute the way that I wanted to. Um, so fast forward, you know, about 17 years, uh, we had moved. Um, this was in 2017 um, was when I gave birth to my, my I had, see, this is what happens when you have so many. <laughs> You're I counting. Birth, yeah, Get out I know. your toes. <laughs> I, um, I gave birth to uh, my my fifth and final child. So I have five children. Um, we're a blended family. I had two uh, that I brought into my cur my current marriage. He had one, and then we had two together. So I have five children, four of which I've given birth to. So I gave birth to my last child in uh, January of 2017, and um, later on that year, my oldest turned 18. So um, over the course of those 17 years of trying to find something, it still never kind of worked out. Um, I was blessed to, again, be able to be a stay-at-home mom. I worked a part-time job just simply to kind of get out of the house and have a little bit of extra spending money. Um, later on that year, uh, my husband uh, graduated, um, he graduated from college in 2015. And then over the course of the next couple of years, he kept trying to find or kept trying to get on a with a permanent full time position with the U.S. Forest Service, which was who he was working with at, for at that time. Um, but the, the prospects were not looking good of that happening. So he started looking elsewhere for a big boy job, as I like to call it, you know, the one with the benefits and, you know, all of that good stuff that our family needed. Um, so he ended up getting a job in Wisconsin. Uh, we were currently at that time living in southwestern Virginia, where I'm originally from on the family farm. Um, and then later on that year, we moved um, about six weeks after my grandmother had actually passed away as well. So my grandmother passed away and then we moved because um, he had gotten a job in Wisconsin, uh, not very far from where uh, he, he grew up. Um, and in doing so, we were going to have to buy a house because when you have that many kids and you have a large dog, because I have a, a large, a large breed dog, I've got a Husky. It's very hard to find a house to rent. Um, oh yeah. That's With gonna, a dog and five kids. Yeah. That's going to, going to yeah. take all that on. It's, it, and we did right. find it very difficult. So um, we ended up renting a Uh, the the Wisconsin DNR uh, in the parks department. He started off as a ranger at the number two state park in the state. Um, worked there for about a year and a half. Um, but anyway, that's getting ahead of myself. Uh, <laughs> backwards to we moved six weeks after my grandmother had passed away, uh, knowing that we were going to have to buy a house. Um, I had to go back and get a full time job. Um, so uh, we ended up commute. I ended up having a commute uh, each way. Um, we moved up here, uh, got up here, unloaded everything on Sunday. I had an interview on Monday and I was hired and started on Tuesday. Um, so you can kind of imagine the grieving process was none. It was, it didn't happen. So I worked. Yeah, you didn't have time to grieve for your grandmother. <laughs> no. Nor did you have time to unpack. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing. We really didn't have a whole lot of time to do much of anything. So I went immediately into a job. There was an hour commute each way. Um, so kids were in daycare. My youngest was in daycare. Um, the kids were in school full time. And I would, you know, 
I would leave before they got up and I would pick them up from daycare, come home, feed them, get them ready for bed. And we would go to bed and do it all over again the next day. And the days that I did have off were spent cleaning, cooking, grocery shopping, laundry, all of those things that have to be done um, in order to, you know, prepare for the week ahead. So I was really, really miserable. Um, and I would cry the entire way to work and I would cry oh the goodness. entire way home because when you're alone oh, no. with your thoughts for an hour in the car, <laughs> yes, there's lots of bad things that go on in inside that space. So I, I, I yes. showed up at work. I, I showed up at work. I did, uh, you know, I was constantly being referred to as an A player. Um, I was very quickly moved into a position of training new uh, people who came in. And so, I mean, obviously, I was a valuable employee. Um, I came to work when I was sick, uh, but when children are sick, um, they can't go to school or they can't go to daycare. So somebody has to stay home with them. And it was me, you know, because nobody can take care of them like I can. So I would stay home with them. Eventually, it really got to a point where I was tired of being penalized for being a mom uh, in a company that was supposed to be family friendly. Um, the mm. last, How were they penalizing you, Sharon? How yeah, were they the, penalizing you? Oh, yeah. The last straw for me was when they jacked my commission away from me because I had missed a half a oh, day. Oh, my gosh. Because I had missed a half a day too much. Um, essentially, what had happened was, and this was in January, uh, not January, July of 2018. Um, in the middle of the month, my son, uh, my youngest son was running a fever. So he could not go to daycare. So I had to stay home with him. He was fine, went to daycare the next day. Um, but he had, he had been running a fever. So I had to stay home with him. So that was one day because they ran on a point system, which I know anybody who's ever worked uh, in any type of, um, especially like a call server, call center, customer service type job, they work on point systems. So there was one point. Um, then at the end of the month, uh, I got a phone call from the daycare. Uh, actually, they called my supervisor. My supervisor put me on the phone and my son had developed a rash and I had to come and get him. Um, so I had to leave work early. That was half a point. The very next day was the last day of the month. I, I picked him up. I took him to urgent care. Come to find out he had hand, foot, and mouth. So um, I ended mm. up having to stay home with him for a couple more days until my husband, because my husband was getting ready to go into like an eight-day off stretch um, because of the way his schedule was at that time. Um, he was getting ready to go into a, a stretch where he had eight days off. So he was going to be able to stay home with him. So because I had missed that one full day, I had to leave early to go pick up my son. And then I missed the next day. That was two and a half days, which each day was a point and then a half a point. You could have two points in a rolling 30 days and you were fine. But because I, because of that half a point, it was like the middle of August. I had, I, one of the supervisors had brought a piece of paper over to my desk. It was a reprimand and I had to sign it and they were taking my commission away from me. So I signed the piece wow. of paper and I also wrote up my resignation notice um, and essentially told them where they could take the job and stuff it. <laughs> Very nicely though. And you guys, I, I know Sharon, I know Sharon, and she really does tell it like it is. So I can only imagine what exactly what she told them so good for yeah, you yeah so you, I did, you know i was very professional about it but in, in in very nice terms i essentially told them where they could take the job and and, and shove it so mm -hmm. um i got home that day you know my husband knew that i was miserable so i had pretty much you know kind of called and texted him told him what was going on um and what i was doing before i did it got home started looking for a new job I literally had uh, calls and emails setting up interviews the very next day. So two days after I put in my resignation notice, um, Facebook did its little magical thing and Kathy popped up in my feed <laughs> with her five day challenge. And so um, I had already attended a bunch of webinars at this point. Um, of course, nothing that was like of any real value. 
so I was like, well, let me go ahead and, and attend this. I actually also, because of the stress that I was under, um, the, that Monday, uh, when your webinar had started, I actually stayed home from work sick. I mean, I say sick, but the stress had actually made me sick. Cause you know, when you don't, sure. when you're not taking care of yourself, your body is going to, your body's going to make you stop and take care of yourself. And that's essentially what had happened uh, was I got sick, wasn't feeling well. Um, and so I took off and I attended the webinar live. So glad that I did because I was able to interact with you. I was able to interact with uh, the other women that were already in your training program and on that phone call. Um, and by the second day into that, I was like, this is it. I, this is what I'm doing. Um, I knew that whatever it was, this was what I needed, you know, it's just. And what was it about, what, what was it, what was it about what you heard that you went, oh, this is it. This is what I want. Because like I said, I had already tried for 17 years at that point to be able to build a business on my own. I knew that I had skills. I had, I had already invested tens of thousands of dollars in skills training and, and at things that didn't work to include going back to college and student loans that I'm still paying on, <laughs> you know, that are just not mm -hmm. serving me. I'm not using them. Um, so I, I knew that this was what I needed because it was so different than anything else. Like the virtual expert training does not teach skills. It teaches women and a handful of men who already have <laughs> valuable skills, um, how to build a virtual business, how to find, get, and keep those, those high paying clients, um, so that you can work smart and not work hard and be able to create whatever vision of success it is that you have. Cause the vision that I had when I first stumbled across this versus the vision versus the vision that I have now are two totally different things. And I didn't know that that was possible for me until after ch making the choice to do whatever it was that I had to do to be able to invest in this coaching and training program. Yeah. So when you were, when you were on in, you know, I love having you on that webinar, you, you know, there are anywhere usually between 20 and a hundred people on one of those webinars that I do. And there's always just a handful who stand out. And they stand out so brightly and shine so brightly that I can't help but notice them. And Sharon was, wow, she was like a sun in the in the middle of the night. She was shining that brightly. So I immediately knew, oh my gosh, this girl is going to be this woman. Sorry. You look so young, Sharon. <laughs> That's why I call you a girl sometimes. Um, and you don't at all look like you could ever have had five children. Again, if you aren't looking at YouTube, go look. Because Sharon is a little... Uh, spitfire in every way. So when I, when you were on there and you were like, just give me the link, I'm ready to sign <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. But you, I did, what I didn't know was that you didn't have the money. You didn't know where you were going to get the money to do this. So can you talk about, because that is what holds a lot of people back, right? Yeah. If they're like, but I don't have the money to do this. Um, no. You look at it in a very different way. So can you talk about that? It was one of those where I always seek guidance in any major decision from, you know, the universe, God, higher power, whatever you choose to call it. You, you have to know that there is something bigger than yourself on this planet um, that is, is a guiding force. So for me, it was God and I, I prayed to God, you know, I was like, if this is, if this is where I am meant to be, if this is what I am meant to do, because like I said, Facebook and it's magic. Um, and it showed up at the right time. Cause had this come to me at any other time prior to when it did, um, there's just no way that I would have been able to make it happen for myself. So I am a firm believer in, um, fate. <laughs> and things, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens when it's supposed to and in its own time. You can't force anything. So uh, I sought guidance from my higher power. Like, God, if this is what I'm meant to do, you know, give me the signs. Show me the signs that this is where I'm meant to be. You know, I'm like, 
I didn't know how much it was going to cost. <laughs> really, I didn't. So I, I got really creative. I mean, I, I sold things um, in order to make it happen. Um, I, you know, did, if anyone who's familiar with Marie Kondo, that's essentially what I did. Was anything that wasn't providing me value that I wasn't using, I sold, got rid of it, um, saved the money. It happened to be just before my, my birthday at that time. <laughs> so I was, I had some money that was given to me for my birthday. So I saved that. And I was like, all right, God, if this is what I'm meant to do, um, this is what I have. Like I have X amount of dollars. And if it's less than this, I will do it. You know, made that promise to God. And so when everything was all said and done, and now the way it runs now is it's actually five days. When, she, when I went through it the first time, I think it was your very first one, it was five days and uh -huh. then there was a bonus webinar and you had to wait the entire right. weekend to get to Monday right. to find where she, did her, where she did her sales pitch and <laughs> told you what the price was going to be in the link assignment. So I'm like, not only oh did my I gosh, have to go I'm so through, sorry. <laughs> not only did I have to go through the five days and sit on the edge of my seat, but then I had to wait a whole weekend. <laughs> Come Monday, I was just like, just tell me already. Um, and when I found out how much it was going to be to invest in this for me and for my family, um, it was $3 less than what I had. And it was terrifying because again, that was pretty wow. much everything. I just got I chills. Had. It was everything that I had, but I doubled but you down. you did have it. Oh, I you, had it. And uh, you had it, it because you had, because you had, you were determined to gather up all that you could and you did rather than. Um, how many times do you hear in, you know, you can tell me and how you hear this from other people, um, what they say when they're like, oh, I don't have the money. Yeah. I hear it pretty much every single person that I talk to. And I talk to people because I am on your uh, breakthrough specialist team. So I have. That's right. Uh, Sharon, Sharon has excelled so much that she actually works with me on three different levels. <laughs> so this is one of those three. And we'll talk about the others too. But she is a breakthrough specialist for my team and does talk with other people who are considering joining our program. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so what do you hear from them I a lot? I hear it all the time as, oh, I, I don't have the money. I don't know where I'm going to get it from. I can't do this. My husband won't let me. I'm like, well, that one, <laughs> that one kind of triggers because it's the whole men not letting me do things. That's a whole nother story. But um, even when it came to, to doing this for myself, I just, you know, I can share my experiences with them. And when you are when you have enough faith in yourself and your own abilities, you figure out how to make it happen. It's really just, I, I don't have the money or I don't, I'm not, I don't know how to come up with the money. It's just an excuse fueled by fear because you're afraid of whatever, good or bad, on the other mm -hmm. side of mm -hmm. that fear. Um, for me, it wasn't, it, the fear of failure was not, not an issue for me because I've fallen on my, my backside more times than I care to admit. I've lost everything more times than I care to admit uh, in my life. So the, the thought of losing everything didn't scare me. You know, it was- Because you knew you, because you've been there before and you've always survived. I've always survived. I've always been able to come back from it. Um, and I come back bigger, better, and stronger every single time. So. Um, it was one of those where I put my trust in, in God and my trust in my faith that um, this was the right thing for me, that this was what I, had, what I was, this was the missing link. This was the missing piece of the puzzle all of those years because I needed somebody who was going to hold my hand and walk me through all the steps, which is essentially what virtual expert training is. It is the exact roadmap that you need in order to build a successful virtual business. Um, and I say that because not only did, was I able to go through the training and build a successful virtual expert business, but I'm also going back through those steps and using it to create a second business, um, which is another true passion of mine um, in coaching. Go ahead and life, talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> in life Sorry, coaching. I was talking over you there. So let me shut no, up for a second. Okay. Say it again. <laughs> In, in life coaching, specifically on um, developing self-love uh, for yourself, whether it be 
uh, weight loss that, you know, you're not happy with your, the way you look and learning how to lose weight. Um, whether it is, uh, past traumas that are in your life, you know, old stories from, you know, the, the jerk that we've dealt with in life. And we've picked up those false stories along the way, because not only was I able to build my, my business, um, but I've also gone through a lot of self transformation since meeting you. And um, it's just been this kind of constant business growth, personal growth, business growth, personal growth, because you get through building, you know, especially in building your business, where you're at right now is only going to take you so far. Then something is going to come up and it's going to slap you in the face. Um, for me, when I made that decision, okay, I'm investing in myself. I promise God it is what it is. <laughs> I got to do this um, because I didn't have a job. I had already quit my job at that point. Um, so yes, I did have to make, start making money as quickly as possible. So that was, you know, goal number one. And I worked with my coach in order to make that happen. Um, goal number two was to get through the training as quickly as possible because I, and it wasn't so much um, just to get through it fast. It was because I wanted to earn my certification so that I could call myself a virtual, you know, a certified virtual expert and be able to have a boost in my own self-confidence. That was ultimately really why that was my second goal was so that I had the confidence to be able to say, these are my rates and this is why my rates are my rates because I had earned it. I'm all, <laughs> that. that's just, and that, again, that's a, a personal thing that I had to, I had to, to work through. Um, it's not that I have to earn the right to be able to, to set my rates the way they are, um, which was something that I learned through this process. Um, yeah. So you, you have really learned a lot and let's go back just for a minute <laughs> to when you started the training program and you had these goals for yourself that you wanted to get through the training program as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. And you did break records doing that yeah. <laughs> and you wanted to earn, start earning money as quickly as possible. Yeah. So how, um, how far were you, how many weeks, months, years, whatever it was, was it before you started earning money and just share anything you want about that? It, some people are probably now listening going, okay, tell me what it is. How, how fast yeah. can I actually start making money? Yeah. And it's really, it's going to be, I mean, everyone is different, obviously. So for me, because I wasn't working and I was able to put, you know, my time into this. So all the hours that I had to dedicate to my business, which at that time was between 30 and 40 hours a week that I was, that I was dedicating. Of course, uh, all non-billable at that time because I didn't have any paying work, but I focused all of my, my hours that I was working on each of the different lessons and getting those steps taken care of. So ultimately, I was able to sign my very first uh, agreement at day 29 into the program. Now, it was subcontracting, which, you know, it, it wasn't, my own direct client, but mm -hmm. it was paying work at the time that I, so that I was able mm -hmm. to start bringing in money while I continued to build my business and learn how to market myself to find, get and keep my own clients. Yeah. So one of the things that I would love for you to share it is, you know, that a lot of people are like, um, and I call it the yell yeah, butts. Yell yeah, but I have a bunch of kids. Uh, yeah, but Sharon does too. Yeah, but I have a really tiny house and I don't have an office. Yeah, but Sharon didn't either. So Sharon, you want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, um, I didn't have this, a dedicated office space or space for a dedicated office. So when you had invited me to, to become a breakthrough specialist in order to have somewhere semi-quiet to be able to, to take those calls, um, I actually set up my office in the, what I like to refer to as the master bathroom. It really wasn't the master bathroom. <laughs> it, was, it was just the bathroom, was the, right? <laughs> yeah. It was the bigger of the two bathrooms. So it was actually, it was a very tiny um, house that we ended up uh, renting from my, like I said, my husband's employer. So there were two bedrooms, um, kitchen, living area, and two bathrooms. So 
we had, um, like I said, my oldest uh, is an adult, so he's off on his own. So we had uh, two, gr two kids in one room, kids in the other room, and the living area was actually big enough that we were able to section off a portion of that and run curtain wire and just hang up some sheets so that there was like a separate area for uh, my husband and I's bedroom. And so that second bathroom just so happened to be off of that space. So that's why I call it the master bathroom. <laughs> and um, Oh God, that I, is so funny. I love that so much. What I did was I hung a curtain up on the wall. Um, like this is a curtain behind me because um, there's a door, not a bathroom. There's not a wall. There's a door on the other side of that. But I hung up a curtain and I sat on the toilet and I had my little uh, laptop desk in front of me and I work and that is just you had your own throne <laughs> exactly you were a queen on your throne <laughs> just going to show you that if I can work from the toilet you can do this you can do this job and run your business from anywhere that you have you know a wi-fi connection I mean and it doesn't yeah. have to and be by the way you guys Nobody could tell because uh, we do a lot of Zoom sessions with everybody in our program and nobody could tell that Sharon was in the bathroom. She just happened to share it with us one day yeah. and we're all like, what? And it was just hilarious. So Sharon, the word that I just wrote down was resourceful. You are incredibly resourceful. And so how, tell us about that. How do you become that resourceful? It is one of those where everyone is resourceful. In one way, shape, or form, everyone is resourceful. Um, my resourcefulness really started when my husband was in college. He was working seasonally for the Forest Service. Um, and th the money that he earned during the summer, we had to kind of save in order to make it through the winter. So... I, I bought meats when they were on sale. I stocked my freezer. I stocked my pantry with all the stuff. And then every day it was like, okay, what do we have? What am I going to fix? And I fixed, you know, so pantry shopping was a skill that I learned. Um, saving money so that we could make it through the winter and pay our electric bill and, and all of those things. Um, I've got five children whose birthdays start in October. So I've got one birthday in October for a child. I've got two birthdays in November. I've got Christmas in December. I have another one now that's birthdays in January. Thanksgiving and Halloween in there too. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, I got another birthday in January. My husband's birthday is in February. And then my, I have another kid whose birthday is in April. So essentially it is nonstop money from September when school starts through Easter, essentially, <laughs> Easter and April, uh, depending upon when Easter yeah. is that year. Um, yeah. So I think it really resourceful that way. Um, but every, like I said, the, that t going to the point of everyone is resourceful. I mean, the vast majority of people are going to figure out how to come up with the money that they need for the things that they want or the things that they have to have. So if you need food, you're going to figure out where you're going to, where you're going to get that, the money for the food from, you're going to figure that out. Mm -hmm. If your hot water, you know, if you own your home, like we do now, um, if you own your home and your hot water, water heater goes out, you're going to figure out how to get a new hot water heater. If your car blows up tomorrow, you're going to figure out how to get a new car, because these are things that unless you live in a city and can take public transportation, which I do not, <laughs> like, <laughs> I live in the middle of nowhere. My, the nearest grocery store is 30 minutes away. So, you know, mm -hmm. you figure out how to come up with the money for the things that you want or the things that you need. So money is really just an excuse for I'm scared. Yeah. It's, and you and I talk about this a lot. It's never really about the money. No, it's never about the money. It's, it's about all those other fears. It's all the other fears. So, which I had, I mean, I did, I had, but I did it anyway, because again, it was a promise that I made to God. So I did it. And literally from the time I hit enter to make my payment, my brain started screaming at me going, oh my gosh, what did you just do? What makes you think you can be successful? Even though all of these other women have been successful, what makes you think you can do it? And I literally had to look myself in the mirror every day shaking because I, I was trembling. I trembled for about three days. My nerves were so shot. 
<laughs> but as I started going through the process and I started uh, leaning on my coach and, and everything, I got more comfortable because I was making things happen. Like things were actually happening. And so by, you know, looking myself in the mirror every day and essentially telling my brain to shut up because I really didn't ha not have time to listen to it at that moment in time. Um, I just put my head down and I did the, I did the work. I literally did everything that I was told to do. Yeah. And how has your life changed since creating your own virtual assistant, a virtual expert business? Well, uh, it's changed dramatically. Just, I mean, I was in a really, a, a really bad place when I came into this program mentally, because again, my grandmother passing and not being able to process all of that grief and everything. And I will not forget, uh, I got a, um, a box in the mail from my coach on October 4th, which happens to be my wedding anniversary, but it also happens to be the day that my grandmother passed away. So yes, happiest day of my life is also the saddest day of my life. And I got home um, that day and there was a box sitting on the step and I opened it up and there was a, a beautiful card from my coach and the, you are a badass book. Um, and I literally dropped to my knees and started crying because she didn't know the situation. Wow. Like she didn't know that. At the time. Really? But that it wasn't timed like that. It was, it, wasn't. it was again, it was the universe. It was your higher power looking out for you. Wow. Giving me what I needed in that moment. And so, um, it was, it was what I needed. And she really had no idea what that meant to me. Um, because again, I was in a, 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 men, a, a mental space. Um, and I, I knew that in your training just about all the trainings you do, you ask people to imagine where will you be six months from now, a year from now, if you don't do this. I refuse to think about it because I may not be here today had I not opted into investing in myself in this program in order to create the life that I wanted. You know, the life that I had been struggling mm. for so many years to create. And now I have it. I, I, I am able to build a, a business around life instead of having to organize life around the work that I do. And that's all I've ever wanted. That's so awesome. <laughs> and you're able to financially contribute more to your family like you wanted to? Absolutely. I'm making more now. Uh, and that's kind of the other funny thing was the, the employer that I was working for called me. I got a phone call uh, about six months after I had stopped going to work because <laughs> essentially that's what I did. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going back. I, I didn't even finish out my two weeks, but they called me and asked me if I would be interested in coming back. So that goes to, goes to show you that I was a valuable employee. Um, mm -hmm. And though, even though I had no call, no showed and just quit, um, that they were interested in having me come back. So yeah, like I said, about six months later, I got a phone call. And um, when I was done laughing, um, I politely declined. <laughs> I, oh, I laughed. I thought it was hilarious. Um, I politely declined and explained to them that I had my own business and I was actually making more money working less hours, which yeah. is still true to this day. How good did that feel to be able to tell them? Oh, that? it was so empowering. I mean, it really like reignited that flame that I had to like really like keep going, you know, um, because ultimately when I started this, I was like, I want to make, I want to work 30 hours a week. I want to make $40,000 a year. And um, I want to, you know, because I figure between what my husband makes and what I make that would, you know, put us around, well, put us over six figures but it, we would be able to live comfortably and have the extras and do the things. And, um, but seeing with this type of a business that you can work less and make more, I'm like, awesome. I'm like, I want, you know, and of course I proclaimed it to the universe. I will have a million dollar business. Um, <laughs> We're gonna Yay! do everything. We're gonna work at. We're gonna work hard every day um, to make that happen, and it will happen because yeah. I, I say so and I've proclaimed it. 
I, I, Sharon, I know it's going to happen because I have seen, seen you, you are driven. And as I'm sure everybody can hear, you are driven not only for yourself, but as someone who, um, works with you, you're my, you're an independent contractor. You're a virtual expert on my team. You do the breakthrough specialist, as we talked about, you also are a coach in the program now. So, uh, you became that same kind of coach that helped you grow. Yeah. And then the third thing that you do for me is what you actually specialize in now. So talk yeah. about that a little bit. That's the LinkedIn marketing, which it, it wasn't what I started with. Um, I actually went through a couple different um, specialties before I stumbled ac across the LinkedIn market. I, did, I didn't stumble before Kathy. <laughs> Kathy called me up and said, hey, you want to do this? You want to try this? I'm like, sure. You know, why not? I mean, worst case scenario, it's a noodle that doesn't stick, um, which is, I, <laughs> I give that analogy to all of my coaching clients as well. Uh, when it comes to this niche thing, because everybody is, is scared of picking the wrong thing. And I'm like, you know, I was, because I grew up and um, the anal I love analogy. So when you're, when you're boiling pasta, the way you test to see if the pasta is done is by throwing the noodle on the wall and seeing if it sticks. So it's a lot easier to clean up individual noodles than it is to clean up the entire pot of noodles off, off the wall or floor, wherever it is, if something doesn't stick. So I'm like, just pick one thing that you think you might interested in, try it. If it doesn't work, then you can always move on to something else. And that's exactly what I did. And it wasn't necessarily because I wasn't good at the other things that I had tried. I was good and I enjoyed them, but everything that I ended up moving to was because I enjoyed it and it was gonna make me more money. And I'm one of those where if I like it, I enjoy it and it's gonna make me more money, why not? Um, and the thing that I loved, loved about LinkedIn marketing was it allows me to do all of the things that I love. Obviously you can tell I love to talk. I love to, I love to talk to people. Um, that's why I do the breakthrough specialist is because I love building relationships with people and talking and learning about you know, what they want, what they need um, and finding out if this is gonna be the right fit. So. I uh, start, got started with doing your LinkedIn marketing. Um, so that ranges, you know, from the, the there, I have to manage the projects, manage everything that's going on. So project management is a skill that I use. Um, I also do the social media aspect side of things. So there's, there's tech that's involved with that. But I also do messaging with people uh, at, you know, as my clients. Um, but messaging with their ideal clients and seeking out new connections for them to just get them in front of more people and build those authentic relationships. Um, so it's, it's organic marketing, which yes, takes longer than say throwing a bunch of money at Facebook ads, but the quality of leads that you get when you do the organic marketing is far better than when people who click on an ad. Um, so it just allows them to be able to get those people on a phone call, find out, you know, and, and be able to close those sales a whole lot easier. Um, so it took everything that I love doing and allowed me to do it all. Cause I, again, I, 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 I always have way more balls than I should probably have in the air at any one given time. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of balls in the air, let's talk about um, one of the things that I recognized early on in my VA career, which is once you learn how, and I think you kind of mentioned this, once you learn how to find, get, and keep clients, you now know how to market just about any business online. Mm -hmm. um, and as a virtual expert uh, who gets to choose your own time, like you do, Sharon, and set your lifestyle style the way you want around that um, you've decided hey I really love life coaching and I want to add that on as yeah. something else that I do yeah so before you became a virtual expert did you realize hey I could also do another thing before I started this program and built my my virtu my virtual expert business no but it is definitely something that I have always felt a pull and a calling to do 
Um, and that's why when you asked me to be a coach, I was like, absolutely. And that's why I am the jackhammer coach <laughs> because I, uh, yes, she is known <laughs> as the jackhammer coach. Yeah, actually she is. She is the, you know, exactly how it, how it sounds is how it feels. And she gets amazing results because of it. <laughs> yeah. Cause again, it's, it's, it's not the work that is hard. It's what's going on in this six inch space. That is the problem. And so even in business coaching, my clients, um, through the virtual expert, uh, training program, I focus our coaching calls on the mental, the mental work, the, the mental growth, the personal growth, all of those things. So those are skills that, because I've, I've been there, I've done that myself. And you, you've heard the expression, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. I am the queen of excuses. Ask my coach. She will hands down. She will totally agree with it. I am the queen of excuses. So there is nothing that anyone can come up with that I have not used or tried to use or thought of myself. So it's recognizing them for what they are, are just excuses that are covering up something else. And so we really dive deep into what is, um, what is standing in their way and keeping them from achieving their goals and getting the results that they really, truly deep down want. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I have some clients that have struggled, but they have recognized um, as my oldest son has over the years, because again, I, I coach like I parent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I know what, I know what people are capable of and I expect great things from them. And when we're not, sorry, I just knocked my mic over. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I got so excited about that. <laughs> and when we're not getting the results that we want, we really have to look at ourselves and be like, okay, why is that? It's not, you know, because my kids are, you know, I mean, let's just take this whole, we're in the middle of the COVID situation right now. So if you're hearing this, like, two years from now, <laughs> we were in the middle of the whole COVID, COVID uh, situation and my children were sent home full time in the middle of March. And I could have used that as an excuse to stop doing what I was doing. Um, yes. But it actually was a growing point for me where I learned that life was just going to continue throwing things at me. And so if I wanted to continue to grow and get to where I wanted to be, that I was going to have to, again, get resourceful and get creative about how I was going to make that happen. <laughs> so, um, I started expanding my team in my business, which, you know, essentially means I, I hired other subcontractors, independent contractors to come into my business and do the things that I don't need to do or that I have a million excuses for why I'm not doing it just simply because either A, I don't want to do it or whatever mental block that I currently have is keeping me from being able to make the, take the steps forward to do it. Um, but they, those are, they're things that need to get done. So if someone else is doing it, great. I don't have to do it. It's fine. Um, I'm a firm believer that food always tastes better when someone else cooks it. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> that so, is for sure. So yeah, I mean, if it's one of those where it needs to get done, I don't want to do it myself. So I've got some, and I have an amazingly, an amazing team. I have an amazing talent that I have been able to find simply by being a part of this program. And, 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 and in our breakthrough sessions, people are like, oh, so you hire people from the program? I was like, I, I personally, I can't speak for anybody, everybody, but I will not hire somebody who has not been through the virtual expert training program for the very same reason that you won't, because mm -hmm. I want, I want the best. I want somebody that I am not, I'm going to be able to, because I'm, I'm kind of like you in a lot of ways where it's like, I know it needs to be done, but I don't want to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to do Why it. I don't want to you? learn how to yeah, I don't want to do it. That's I don't right. want to learn how to do it. So I'm just like, okay. And a lot of times I don't know exactly what it is that I need. It's just, I have a general idea of, okay. But again, because I haven't taken the time to learn how to optimize, I'm just like, all right, so here's what I'm currently doing and it's not working. Um, here's the general vision that I have. And then I just say, I give everyone the freedom to do their job. And, you know, we'll, we'll start off where I'm like, 
kind of looking at things. I'm like, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to a point where I'm like, eh, you just do it. I trust you. You're good. Right. Go for it. <laughs> and isn't that the beauty of working with a virtual experts and independent uh -huh. contractors? Because, you know, they do, they're not employees. You do not need to manage them. They have their own expertise yeah. and they can just go and do. I love yeah. it. And we don't accept so, everyone into this program. So I know that right. anyone who's in this program has been vetted, vouched for, and they are, they're a good person to work with. Yeah, they're already professional before they're allowed into the program. Yes. They already are supportive. They already are anti-racist. Um, all of those things that we enjoy working with. So yeah, we vetted them already before. Um, and then they got the training on how to work well professionally and as a problem solver. And yeah, I'm with you, Sharon. Why not hire those? Oh yeah, <laughs> those absolutely. People. Yeah. So why the dragon? Why the dragon? Why did that become your symbol? Because I, in going in my personal development, personal, personal work on um, meditation is, and I, I'm going to get very woo here for a minute. So if you're not into woo, you can ignore me, but I'm very into woo. So I'm um, into woo. Give me some woo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very into woo. So I have worked with a couple, a couple different um, people on mindset and, and personal development. Um, and I've, I've learned, you know, cause I tried the whole meditation thing and the mindfulness and it's like, I just, I, I can't do that. But when it comes to like spiritual guided meditation and actually doing like meditative journeys, um, that's what works best for me. And I have some of the clearest moments when I do those things. So, um, you know, the first, the first moment when I realized that that was what worked best for me, um, uh, was one of the mindset tune-ups that you had provided to us. Um, and the person who provided that, uh, was another woo person. So I, she had some guided meditations and I, was listening to some of those and it took me, you know, my, uh, calling on my guard, my guardian angels, which I was not surprised when my grandparents showed up and I'm going to try really hard to not start crying. Um, I was not surprised when my grandparents showed up, um, and they've never spoken to me in these meditative journeys. Um, but they've always had, there's always been some feeling or image or thought in guidance in those, those, those groundings and meditation. So it's not something that I can do all the time because it takes a ton of energy to be able to do that. Um, I know the next time I did it and I called upon my guardian angel, it was just my grandfather who showed up and he had a box for me. And when I opened the box, there was just light and a overwhelming feeling of love that came from that box. So, um, it let me know that they're there and they're helping to guide me um, and that they're with me no matter where I am or what I do. Um, and then another time I had done, I had done a, a guided meditation and, and grounded into the earth and uh, into the heavens and, you know, all the, the frilling and the stars and all that good stuff. And then went down into the center, into my heart chakra and the color that is there is red and it's fire and it's flame. And there's an egg that I carry. It's what it feels like. There's an egg that I carry around with me with all of the stress and the anxiety and all the, 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 the mental gremlins, um, the things that the mental gremlins like to throw at me is an, it's an egg. In that egg is a dragon. Like my inner, my inner being is a dragon. So, um, I've always had a, a thing for dragons. I've, I've tried to be the unicorn and I cannot be the unicorn. And it is because I'm, I am a fire breathing dragon. I have, um, conviction. I have power. I have an in internal desire. Um, and I have to keep it in check because, <laughs> because I'm very passionate about things. So when I do get very passionate, um, 
I can, you know, that dragon can come out and breathe fire or the dragon can curl up around me and protect me. So um, I like it when the dragon curls up and protects me um, rather than fire coming out. So that's essentially where the dragon came from now. I love that story. That's fabulous. And Sharon, as soon as you shared that you were a dragon and I think I saw something on Facebook with an image and some t-shirts and different things like that. I was like, oh, of course, that is Sharon. Absolutely, that's Sharon. <laughs> I, I immediately recognized you. So that is really, really fascinating that you came up with that, it that way. And your, your imagery, your capability of visualization is just incredibly powerful. Thank you for sharing that with everybody. Yeah. But that's so in where rapid, I, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, ahead. but as a coach, that is where I come from with the jackhammer. Yeah, I'm the jackhammer. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell it like it is, but everything always comes from a place of love. Yeah. Because I don't want to see, because I've done it so many times myself, I don't want to see people settle for less than what they're capable of just simply because they're afraid. Yeah. Stop playing small, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So in wrapping up, um, I would love for, for you to talk. We've got so many things to talk about here as we wrap up. <laughs> I'd love for you to share if somebody wants to work with you um, on LinkedIn marketing, <laughs> organic LinkedIn marketing. How can they find out more about that and get in touch with you? Yeah, so you can find me on LinkedIn. I love connecting with new people there um, or the Heartwit group on Facebook. That's my business page. Um, and there you can join me every um, second Monday of, of, the, of every month um, for a live Ask Me Anything. So I come live and you can ask any questions. I'm all about giving away the cow for free. So I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to give you what you need to know. Um, and then if there's something that I can't give a quick answer to that needs more of a dive, a dive deeper, I do go live every Wednesday unless something comes up that I can't, um, which I do tend to let people know in advance that I won't be able to do it. Um, but every Wednesday I do a let chat live where I dive into a more specific topic and um, give tips and tricks. And can always visit me on my website. That's heartwickgroup.com uh, and download my step-by-step -step guide to prospecting on LinkedIn there. And then while you are there, you can go check out my blog for a few words on how you can make the most of your LinkedIn marketing efforts. And as someone who has turned over all of her LinkedIn marketing, Sharon, <laughs> that's me. I can tell you that she does a fabulous job. Um, I like to say that she comes with a batteries included, as you can probably tell by hearing her. Uh, I don't have to wind her up and ask her to get going. She's just always going. And I really value that. And if you value that and you're looking for somebody to manage your LinkedIn marketing, I can highly personally recommend Sharon. So Sharon, how about for those people who are like, wow, Sharon is speaking my language. I really want to you know, step into my full power. I want to stop playing small. I need a life coach or might want to explore what if I need a life coach? How can they get in hold of you about that? So you can, you can email my email address is on my website. It's info at heartwickgroup.com or you can um, find me on either Instagram or um, Facebook and Sharon Hartwick coaching. Sharon Hartwick coaching. And we will put all of these links in the show notes. Uh, in thinking about your ideal client for the life coaching program, talk a little bit about who would be the kind of person that you would be like, oh, yes, I can really, really help. Yeah. My ideal clients are, are strong um, women who have a very clear vision of who their ideal clients are. Um, this is on the LinkedIn marketing side, so obviously. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who have a very vision of who their ideal clients are, um, who are tired of throwing money at Facebook ads that aren't performing the way that they want them to, uh, who are- That was me. <laughs> if, if and when the day that Facebook, you know, uh, goes away or, you know, whatever, that you have- an Bursts into flames. Exactly. 
you have an alternate way to continue to go or your ads get shut down <laughs> which happens frequently <laughs> have, for no reason exactly. you are, you're a business owner that does paid advertising you know that your ads get shut down uh you know you're not able to receive dms uh there's uh somebody i follow on instagram who has been working trying to get through to somebody on facebook for weeks now because they can't access their dms on instagram or facebook i'm like yeah so it's like you know it's like you're gonna have to email me um mm -hmm. and that really yeah uh, okay that's so, who yeah. you're looking for is a linkedin Strong marketing women. client yeah I, I love working with coaches uh, coaches and trainers um i also um had a brain pick up for a moment there <laughs> Okay. very strong so in values. your life coaching oh strong family values good and your life coaching who are you looking to help in there in that I, arena i i i help women who are uh perimen perimenopausal um or who have had hysterectomies or have autoimmune disorders um really work through the mindset um that's keeping them from losing weight because um I have gone through my own personal uh, weight loss journey in the last six months. Um, and it really, the, the only thing that was different this time was I had done all of the mindset work beforehand. So I was able to commit to my why I wanted to get healthy and to lose the weight. So mm -hmm. um, it's easy to say, you know, oh, I can't lose it. I, you know, because my hormones are all, it, it can be done. You just have to make that conscious choice every day um, and really stick to your goals. So I'm, I'm all about overcoming the challenges that are keeping you from achieving whatever goals you wanna reach. Um, primarily, like I said, I do the weight loss, but it, it's really, I'm not, I don't give out meal planning advice. We just work on the, why can't you say no to the Twinkie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's not hard yeah. you just say no yeah without white knuckling it yeah uh, because willpower in the long run we all run out of it don't we exactly yeah and then i will also throw in here that if you're listening to sharon and you're like you know what i really want to become a virtual expert too and i would love the jackhammer style coaching you can, you can go to virtualexperttraining.com, find out more about our program. And then all you have to do is request Sharon as your coach and she will uh, be that coach for you. And um, we have many great coaches. Sharon is the only jackhammer. <laughs> as I tell everybody, we've got, we have 12 different coaches. They range from everywhere from the white glove treatment all the way to the jackhammer now. I'm the jackhammer and everything in between. and there's everything yeah. in between and if you're not sure what you need in a coach or who would best be the right coach for you um there's a fabulous survey in the very beginning of of the training that you go through and you're like okay this is what i need this is what i what I, what would help me best to succeed and i tell all of my coaching clients in our very first phone call that if there is something that you need that i'm not giving you let me know if it is something that is within my capabilities to give to you i will give it to you if it is not there's gonna be no hard feelings we will find a coach that can give you what you want because if you need the white gloves that's not me <laughs> if you need sugar coating, <laughs> that is not me I, I can, I, i'm like i'm just not capable of sugar coating anything um mm -hmm. you know. but if you're tired of sugar coating and you're getting cavities sharon is there for you so Sharon, thank you so much. I could talk to you all day long, even though I know so much about you already, I could still talk to you all day long. You are electrifying. Thank you for having and me. And inspirational. Really ah, you're very welcome. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.